Hello and welcome to the Closing the Gap from the Research series of short films in which we seek to present research which will be of interest in helping us to improve the physical health of people who use mental health services. I am going to answer a series of questions which I've written on post-it notes in front of me just now. So who are you? Uh, my name is Simon Gilbody. I am Professor of Psychological Medicine at the University of York and I am Director of the Closing the Gap Network. Okay, next question. What is Scimitar? So I'm going to talk about Scimitar. Scimitar is the largest trial ever undertaken of a smoking cessation intervention designed specifically for people who use mental health services. This is the second time I've spoken about Scimitar from the research sofa. And in the Scimitar program of work, we seek to help people with the most severe forms of mental ill health who are smokers who want to quit and we seek to help them to quit safely and effectively. And the main results of that trial reported last year in Lancet Psychiatry and within the Scimitar programme of work we seek to answer a series of questions which are important for clinicians, for people who use mental health services and in this case important for decision makers, people who commission or design services for um, people who uh, experience mental ill health. So what's the new study that I'm going to talk about today? Well I spoke before about whether the scimitar intervention works and we can be reasonably confident that it is effective in helping people to successfully quit smoking. But the next question that we seek to answer in a piece of research that's been published just recently in the journal Addiction is whether that is whether that intervention is cost effective and whether it represents good value for money to the National Health Service. So within the Scimitar programme of work, what we did was we conducted an economic evaluation alongside the randomised control trial and we adopted the perspective of the National Health Service and we importantly sought to examine whether the cost effectiveness of the Scimitar programme, how that stacks up against this important cost effectiveness threshold which is set by the National Institute for Health and care excellence in deciding whether it supports or finds it difficult to support an intervention in the NHS. And that cost effectiveness threshold is between 20 and 30 thousand pounds per quality adjusted life year of quality. So what did we find in our economic evaluation of the Scimitar program? Well we went to great lengths to establish the costs associated with the intervention, including the costs of the people who delivered the training for the people who then went on to deliver the intervention to people within the trial. Um, so it cost their time, the two day training programme that was involved in ensuring that people had the ability to deliver that programme and we costed all the materials associated with the delivery of that programme right down to the last sheet of paper, the last paper clip. And when we costed that all up, the cost per delivery of the intervention per participant in the trial was around £190. So um, there were some costs associated with the intervention. Um, but then we also studied the costs of people's interaction with the NHS over a 12 month period and we found within the trial when we followed up within this 12 month time horizon that those costs associated with the delivery of the intervention were offset by reductions in service use amongst people who received the specially designed intervention to enable people to specifically quit smoking. So we found that the costs associated with the NHS resources were reduced by about £270 compared to people who received usual care. So the, um, the costs were reduced in the intervention group but were also associated with improvements of quality of life within the intervention group. So um, it cost less and it was associated with uh, an improvement in quality of life with this metric that we use to measure quality of life within economic evaluations, the quality adjusted life year. So when we put those things together, 
it meant that the intervention came out with a reasonably favourable ratio of costs to benefits within this 12 month time horizon and there was a strong probability that came in below this 20 or 30,000 pound cost effectiveness threshold that's set by NICE. So those were the main findings. So why is this important? Well, we've shown within our Scimitar programme of work that smoking cessation for people who use mental health services really only gets traction and is really only effective when that is embedded within mental health services and is designed specifically to meet the needs of people who use mental health services. So in order to implement this intervention, it's going to mean the design and the investment of new services embedded within mental health services. So decision makers in the NHS are going to know not just whether it works, but whether it represents good value for money. So quitting smoking, we know from research elsewhere, is always going to be good value for money to the NHS because of the substantial improvements in health that are associated with quitting. So this prospective economic evaluation within the Scimitar program stacks up really nicely with the other things that we know about the cost effectiveness of smoking cessation interventions. But the limitation of this study is that it really only adopted this 12 month time horizon. It's studied within the 12 month period of follow up within the Scimitar trial. And we know that the real benefits of smoking cessation are realised in the longer term when we hopefully avoid some of the long term physical health problems that are associated with smoking. Now, this study is really important just at the moment because we are in the midst of COVID and we know that people who experience long term physical health problems associated with smoking are at a much greater risk of a poorer, adverse or even a fatal outcome associated with COVID. And it's really important that people who use mental health services are not disproportionately affected by COVID because it has the potential to amplify the health inequalities that we see for people who use mental health services. So if we want to do something about COVID, it's really important that we do something about risk factors for adverse outcomes for COVID. So it's really important that we invest in effective smoking cessation services embedded within mental health services. So that's it from me. Um, thank you very much for listening and we hope to continue to uh, talk about research within this From the Research Sofa Closing the Gap series of videos. Thank you very much. I can't actually remember starting smoking but I know what I did do once was to take the cigarette butts that my dad had left because he used to leave long cigarette butts and I rolled one into a cigarette and smoked it in the toilet and it was just whoa. a lot of us used to smoke it was just what was done really I was diagnosed with schizophrenia at 27 and about three years after that they changed it to bipolar disorder when you get a mental health difficulty say your first admission to hospital or something like that and everyone's smoking around you or everyone's queuing to go outside to smoke it can make you smoke more heavily. I don't believe all mental health problems are lifelong. They can be massively ameliorated. And to add on smoking to that, and it's just what everyone accepts when you're on a ward, that's what everyone does, that's what we all want is to break out for the fag break. I think it's massively unfair, that low self-expectation of people. At first I dreaded, you know, we were going to make you think of a date to give up and I dreaded that but within, I can't remember, I think about a month I'd given them a date and organised uh, vaping cigarettes and uh, patches. Behavioural support can help people make a successful quit attempt to stop smoking. People are twice as likely to make a successful attempt if they receive nicotine replacement therapy. This can be accessed via GP surgeries or by stop smoking services. Another medication that can help is Renocline, also known as Champix. This needs to be prescribed by a GP. Once I'd set the quit date, she'd test it and then she'd make me promise at the end of every session that I wouldn't smoke until the next time we met. 
it became something that you were proud of saying and that you wanted to say. One of the most important things is to tailor the intervention to the to the person and, and look at how they would replace the amount of time that they would spend smoking um, with another activity which would give them an amount of pleasure and distract them from their smoking activity. That's been really good to get your breath back and stuff like that to get you moving. That's very enjoyable as well because you meet people and it's all very sociable. Walk at your own pace. Even though my health problems aren't all gone, I've got a few to contend with. It's one thing that I made an effort with and it's succeeded. So I feel good about it. <laughs>